in Mosley, and you will see that right uh, a year younger, an inch and a half taller, two inches longer in the arm from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in at 154 pounds. We have weighed neither unofficially tonight. Punch stat numbers from their first fight, Larry. Very revealing. Right. Wright was much more active. Mosley has been throwing approximately 25% fewer punches since he moved up from the lighter weights. Jabs in particular, Wright was able to control the action throwing almost twice as many jabs per round as Mosley. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Winky Wright Shane Mosley fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the score cuts after four rounds have been completed, and you cannot be saved by the bell at any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, thank you very much, Harold Letterman. Shane Mosley has been boxing since he was eight years old. Now, he will prepare to walk to the ring for the very first time without his father. Roy, his father's here. And not only is he here, he's around. He's at the news conference, he's at the weigh-in, and he's issuing quotes to reporters. Is that damaging and destructive to Shane? Uh, no, I don't think it's damaging or destructive. I think it's good to show that his father is still here. I hope his father is issuing um, support coats and not bad coats. Jim, Joe Goosen wants Mosley to return to the kind of fighter he was at the lower weights when he stopped or knocked out 32 of his first 34 opponents, but did it by first breaking him down with his hand speed and his intelligence in the ring. So you're going to see a slightly different body on Shane Mosley when he gets into the ring because for the first time in a very long time, he did no weightlifting before this fight. Mosley claimed he felt sluggish and that his body simply would not respond in the first fight against Wright. He says tonight, Wright will be shocked at the energy and the movement he'll be able to show. Wright will be saying, who is this masked man? But some say, Roy Jones, if Shane throws more punches, it's only going to leave more openings for the bigger Winky Wright. Yeah, but Winky Wright is not a big one-punch puncher either. So that wouldn't hurt that he would get open shot. That wouldn't bother Shane. Winky doesn't really punch hard for a game middleweight. He's a consistent fighter. He doesn't thrive off of power. Shane Mosley's biggest wins, two of them, over Oscar De La Hoya. The loss to Winky Wright, and of course the two losses to Vernon Forrest, and the question is, is Shane making the same mistake twice? Many suggested that he shouldn't go directly to the rematch with Forrest after Forrest snuffed him the first time. He insisted on doing so. Many suggested that he shouldn't go directly to this rematch against Winky Wright. He insisted once again on doing so. Here comes Winky. Fought under the radar for many years. Roy, would Winky Wright have been an elite star six or seven years ago if somebody prior to Shane Mosley had given him a chance to get into the fraternity? Yes, I think he would have. Most guys were avoiding him, which is why I wanted to pick him up. Because I saw so many people avoiding him and not giving him a good opportunity to show who he really was. The one or two opportunities he got, he got the short end of the stick. So that gave me more reason to want to get him and help him along that journey. That's a long, hard journey to stay on and to stay focused while you're on that journey by yourself. Having me, he knew he would get a shot like this soon. Jim, until he fought Fernando Vargas, he was a stick and move southpaw. He didn't create the kind of excitement that it would have made him even a television fighter, much less a popular champion. But he is a champion now. When he came home after beating Mosley, there was a big sign out in front of his favorite gentleman's club. Congratulations, Winky Wright. They have gentlemen's clubs in Tampa? So I've heard. Yeah, but do they have gentlemen? <laughs> so there are the uh, notable wins for Wright. He made a career of beating Bronco McCart. And, of course, the win over Shane Mosley. Had he fought the last two rounds against Vargas five years ago, the way he fought the first ten, you might have heard of him long before now. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions.
Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino of Las Vegas, USA, where tonight Gary Shaw Promotions is proud to present the rematch. 12 rounds of boxing for the universally recognized undisputed Super Welterweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Nemiroff, sanctioned by the WBC and WBA, and the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman John Bailey, Executive Director Mark Ratner. The three judges at ringside scoring this contest will be Hubert Earl from Canada, Dwayne Ford from Nevada, and Tommy Kazmarek from New Jersey, and when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, working for the 167th time in a world title bout, Joe Cortez. And now, for the thousands in attendance here at the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas, and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing light blue with black, official weight, 154 pounds, professional record, 39 victories including 35 knockouts with only three defeats and one no decision. From Pomona, California, the former lightweight, former welterweight, former super welterweight champion of the world, Sugar Shea. And his opponent, across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing dark blue with white, official weight, also 154 pounds. Professional record, 47 victories, including 25 knockouts, with only three defeats. From St. Petersburg, Florida, presenting the reigning, defending, universally recognized, undisputed Super Overweight Champion of the World, Ronald Winky All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Abide by the rules by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. I'm here to enforce them. Give me a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch them up. Everyone expects Shane Mosley to try to be quicker at the outset, including Winky Wright. He might just try to force him to take him on. They meet in the center of the ring. Shane twice, tries twice to jab. Winky shakes his head as if to say, nah, you didn't get to me. Last fight, uh, Winky Wright used his jab to kind of control Shane. And that's what he's starting out with now, but Shane has to stop that. Shane throwing a four-punch combination. There were too few of those for him in the first fight. And I don't think that the combinations are the way, is the way to beat uh, Winky Wright for Shane Mosley because Winky will take those punches just like that and keep coming. All he'll do is use that to wear Shane out. What Shane has to do is use his own jab to stop Winky's jab. If he doesn't use his jab to nullify Winky's jab, he's going to lose again. Well, well, what Shane is plainly trying to do, Roy, is throw more body punches than he did in the first fight. He's already practically done that. Yeah, that's true too, but the body shots are not going to be nearly as effective until he can get something wrong with that jab, like that. Because Shane Mosley was clearly discouraged midway through the first fight, I asked his new trainer Joe Goosen yesterday how important it was for him to perform well in the first two rounds. And Joe predictably said, critically important, important that he set the pace and establish the way the fight will be fought. Not easy to do against a guy whose style is unique and has given him the right to dictate many fights. And once again, uh, Ricky Wright is using his jab to control Shane right there. That's the problem Shane has. 
Shane's trying to go to the body more. It's not easy to do when Wright pins his elbows against his ribs. Wright is trying to walk Shane down, wear him down, remind him of what happened in the first fight. And that jab is a real reminder. And Wright is so confident of what he's doing in there. It's very difficult for Shane Mosley to reverse the enormous confidence Winky Wright feels against him right now. Wright landed that left hand, smiled, blocked Mosley's body shots, smiled again, goes back to work with the jab. One reason that Wright's right jab is so effective is that he is a right-hander. He does everything except fight right-handed. His strongest hand is his right. Former heavyweight champion Michael Moore was that way as well. Shane has a cut already on the outside of his left eye. Could that be from uh, Winky's right jab? That's exactly what it's from. And Winky now bats Shane back into the ropes with a strong left hand. Wright is finding it relatively easy to do what he wants once again in the last minute of round one. Not cut, look like he's blood. Keep the jab on his ass. More left hands this round. When you end up inside, let that hook go. Let the hook, let the step back hook go. Get room. All right? Calm just like you are. That's so perfect. That's so perfect what you did. Let's not change a thing. Okay? When you feel those, you're coming up on those ropes, turn and get to the big part of the ring. Because that water don't spill it. You hear me? A couple deep breaths now. Real good. Just be sharp and cool like you are. Don't waste nothing. We got plenty of condition. Don't stand in front of them and let them touch you. Dan Burningham. Uh, Ricky Wright's trainer has been with him since he was 15 years old. Joe Goosen making clear in that conversation with Shane Mosley, he wants him off the ropes in the middle of the ring, but he wants him moving. Doesn't want him to stand in front of Wright and let Wright touch him. That's what happened way too frequently in fight number one. Body shot by Wright. Mosley seems a little uncertain. He throws a choppy left jab, and Winky throws a longer right jab, and, and his chain's jab doesn't have a chance against Winky's long jab. Unless he can find a better angle. Or do what he just did then, go left and right and get inside of the punches. It's not going to be a better angle when you're facing a southpaw. Compubox numbers in round one demonstrating exactly what Roy says about the problem of Shane getting to right. Dompey Box found right landing 22 out of 45, and Shane only 5 out of 59. All body connects. In other words, Dompey Box didn't see Mosley landing a single punch on Wright's head in the first round. I don't believe that number. Now, that's not true. He did land a few shots to the head. They just weren't power shots. See, there's the jab right there. That's what Winky uses to control Shane Mosley with. It's what Vernon Forrest did as well. Yeah, but it's different with Vernon Forrest because he's an orthodox fighter. Yeah, I mean, but it was the jab. It and the length. And, and a right hand that did damage when it landed. Hard right hand inside by Wright. Mosley comes back to the body. Solid left hand upstairs by Winky Wright. Left hand lands again. Mosley, not enough head movement to elude Wright's straight shots. Good right hand right. lands upstairs for Shane Mosley. Tries it again. Gets Wright's ear. Body shot by Mosley. Then he punches against Wright's gloves. Winky goes back to just touching him, touching him, touching him with the jab. Good right hand by Mosley. Wright with the left of the body. Mosley seems to be fighting him almost the same way as he did in the first fight right now, standing mostly in front of him. There's a good left hand to the body by Mosley. Good right, right to the body by Mosley. And another. So already Shane Mosley is landing more effective body punches than was the case in the first fight. There's a 
Good left hand by right, and Mosley with a disgusted expression. Now he's using the pitter pat punches to nullify the jab son. That's what he has to do all night, though, if he wants to win this fight. Hard fought second round coming to a close. Mosley did some damage to the body. Wright still in charge upstairs. This Tuesday, tune in for the next Real Sports with Brian Gumble. This month, Real Sports looks at former Detroit Tiger Cecil Fielder. Once a home run hitting billionaire, Fielder is now destitute after gambling cost him his fortune and his family. Painful story. Debuts Tuesday, November 23. Gotcha. Relax. You good. You feel good? You're next one, man. Okay, put the pressure on. You ready with the left hand? Ready with the left hand more. Gotta let the hands go more. Let your hands go Be first more. But don't stand still. And there's Shane's dad, Jack Mosley. Still training fighters, other fighters besides Mosley. And still with strong opinions about his son's career and abilities. Compi box numbers in round two, way more even. Right, 16 out of 57. Mosley, 12 out of 46. There's a hard right hand and a left hand upstairs by Mosley. Wright said that he didn't feel Shane had any real power in the first fight. Mosley said, I'm not surprised by that. My body had nothing that night. It was a good one-two by Wright. Mosley came back with a right hand, but Winky rolled on the punch. Wright nods and comes in with a straight left hand, then a right hook. Mosley having difficulty stopping Winky's attack upstairs. And he allows himself to get blocked against the ropes, where Joe Goosen didn't want him to be. He can't seem to avoid that straight left lead once he pins himself against the ropes. He's fighting behind Winky, and that's why he's getting caught so much. Meaning he's letting Winky initiate the contact first. What do you mean by fighting behind him? He's letting Winky initiate contact before he tries to fight. Right comes forward like an, like arm that. Like an armored vehicle, occasionally letting those rockets go. Wright's left hand is picking up steam as this round progresses. There's a hard right to the body by Wright. Backs Mosley into the ropes again. Still going to the body. Look out for that left hand upstairs. Left hand to the body and then upstairs, and he lands it again. Shane comes back with a right. But one punch at a time now for Mosley. Well, he looks very discouraged at this point. Body shot by Wright, looked a little low. Joe Cortez tells him to keep it up. When Shane Mosley was dominating the lightweight division, later when he was beating Oscar De La Hoya, moving up to welterweight, we didn't know how visibly he could show discouragement when things went badly in a fight. But we've seen it against Forrest, we saw it against Wright the first time around. And this builds gas, puts gas in uh, Wright's tank because he looks for guys to start to slow down and, and lose confidence in the fight. That's how he wins fights. He usually starts out fighting guys who are stronger, punches, or quicker fighters than him. And as he sees, sees their confidence go away, he builds confidence. Good body shot by Mosley. Good combination, oh, bring on, bring on, actually. Bring on, bring on, bring on, bring on. But Wright doesn't back off. Come on. Three rounds in the books. And though the fight is somewhat different than the first time around, the results you know don't appear to be yeah, different yet. Over there. That's why he stalled out here. Did you know that? Yeah. And then backed up when he came out and did some deep breaths. We're just getting going now. Look, look at me. You've got to have this mentality. We're just getting going. We're going to save the best for later on for this game. You just keep picking, being calm and cool. Keep the walk. Put some ice on the neck. Put some neck. ice on the neck. Do you understand what I'm saying? Keep him, look at me, Shane. Keep him turning. Okay, keep him turning. Use your feints a little bit more in jabs, drawing them in. 
PC Winky inside, feeling real comfortable, landing a few shots. There's a good left under shot. Shane tried to counter, but Winky's initiating all the attack. Here Shane countered the jab with a right hook, which is a great counter for that jab, but he has to do more of it. Told you coming into the fight, Wright has been averaging 35 to 40 jabs thrown per round in his very good performances. Already tonight, Wright landing 11 out of 34 jabs per round by CompuBox average. Mosley, 2 out of 22. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim. Started at 27. Three rounds to nothing. Ronald Winky Wright. Jim, I got to tell you something. When you fight a southpaw, you got to back the guy up. you got to get off first. you got to back him up. Shane Mosley's just not doing it. Winky Wright taking the, the effective aggression the entire fight. Great defense. you got to give him credit for that defense. Whenever Shane goes to the head, he blocks it with the forearms, and that's not the scoring area. Ken Mosley just landed a good left hook, one of his better punches in the fight so far. Some judges might have given the second round to Mosley. I'm not sure why you have to back a southpaw up any more than any other fighter. Because Winky Wright doesn't fight like a classic southpaw anymore because he is an aggressor. Yeah, but the thing about Winky is he's more comfortable coming forward, and this is why you should back him up as a southpaw in particular. The other reason you, people say you usually back a southpaw is because when a southpaw comes forward, he throws punches from the different side. You're used to seeing a right-hander come at you, but you're not used to seeing a left-hander come at you. So everything you do that works against a right-hander, which is what we most brought up and learned to uh, talk to fight against, doesn't work against him. So you're better off to go ahead and initiate the contact so that you make him find out what you do. See right there, if, if Mosey pushed the attack there, Winky would be in a little bit, uh, uh, would be uncomfortable. But when he lets him stay comfortable, then Winky's not going to burn as much energy and he's in his comfort zone. Oh, 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 stop right there. Don't pull the head down. Don't pull the head down. Let's start. Come on, guys. Watch your head. Watch your head. Winky's definitely the strongest guy here. That's what happened when you wait on a southpaw, just like that. He got caught with a good uh, left right hook because he's waiting on Winky. Good right to the chest by Mosley. You made an interesting statement there, Roy Jones. Winky Wright is the stronger guy. I ran into a sculpted weightlifter in the lobby who said, how in the world can you say Wright is stronger? Look at Mosley's body. What's the difference between boxing strength and weightlifting strength? It's a lot of different. Mo uh, um, Mosley's body is compact and built for a uh, short-term strength. Winky is not built for short-term strength. He's built long and lengthy. That's overlasting strength. That strength will last you the whole night. Shane's strength is only for a short period of time. Williams is grab weight, pick it up, and go up with it and down with it, and they're done. We have to be able to maintain for 12 rounds. A weightlifter never will go 12 rounds. Come close to hitting this and you put yourself on the ropes. Okay? Stay off the ropes. I, I'm telling you right now, I'd rather see your body on him, turning him, than giving him that punching room right there. You know what I'm saying? Because you're getting in your best shots. You're getting in your best shots when you're off on angles and closer to him. I want a jab. He is the faint. And, and follow it with the left hand sometimes. A jab. One, two, all right? Faint, one, two. Bang. Then slam the body. Yes, keep the jab, like they say, trick him with Great. the jab. And there's another shot of Shane Mosley's dad, Jack, and I am told that he has moved from one seat to another and gotten closer to his son's corner. Whether that indicates that Jack is going to attempt to become a part of the conversation in the corner remains to be seen, but maybe he just wanted to feel closer to the action. Round five begins. Winky Wright feeling very confident and comfortable after what he's done in the first four rounds. A little bit freer swinging offensive performance than in the first fight. Well, Wright's fighting like a guy with aces up looking for a full house. CompuBox numbers to support my assertion that it was a little bit freer flowing offensive performance. Wright averaged 57 punches thrown per round in the first fight. Tonight he's averaging 63. Mosley. 52 around in the first fight, 52 around tonight. 
Good left hook by Shane Mosley. Wakey could answer right back with a right with a straight left lead though. Double left hook by Mosley and a hard right hand on Wakey's chin. And another right hand on Wicky's chin. And oh, right, hurt Ricky. Oh, hurt Ricky. right in the world is oh, right. Hurt Ricky. Right, right seemed determined to yeah. show Mosley that he can't hurt him. Well, he didn't show him the truth because he did hurt him. Yeah, and he went to his body, which he was really, really smart. Yep. Right. yep, before he hurt him, he went to his body. Right dropped his hands, and Mosley took advantage of the opportunity to hit him in the body. That was smart. Come on, guy. come on, hey. Come on, talk to Corbin. First half of this round belongs to Shane Mosley, as Wright is either taking a vacation or showing off. He waited too much, he's gonna get caught with a big shot if he keeps waiting like this. You think he's hurt more than he's showing? Yeah, he's hurt more than he's showing. But he doesn't care, this is his style of fight, he's been doing this his whole career. He wants to make Shane work himself down so he can put the pressure on Shane. You gotta know Winky. Good body shot by Shane, but that's smart. So he's setting Shane up for more discouragement in your view. Basically. Oh, there's a hard right hand by right upstairs. Another hard hook by right. Winky seems to have gotten his energy back. Starts off with the jab again. Another right hook. Goes right to the Shane. body. Those are good body shots Shane's doing. And Shane is managing to throw punches more fluidly without loading up. Wright is pop shotting it. This is Wright's fight. This is the type of fight Wright wants to fight. This is how he's driven because he wants to make you fight, get you tired, and he knows he can outlast most guys because this has been his style of fighting for a long time now. What if, what if Jose he lands another left hook? Wright walks through it, keeps coming. Hammers Mosley with the left upstairs. Mosley hammers right to the body. And as you see, Wright is not the big power puncher, the one punch power puncher. He's a cumulative guy. And he can take a punch pretty well. Exactly, and that's what he wants to do right there. Solid left hand stunned Mosley to end the round. That's the most competitive round and the best round that they fought against each other in two fights. You don't win a big fight that way. I know you can take a shot. God damn it. Don't do that bullshit. That ain't you. You take your short steps, you dab your way in. You don't walk in like this. Larry and Roy, we're going to show in real speed here, right dropping his hands and getting hit. You got overconfident here. It's telling Shane basically that you can't hurt me. Shane landed a good right shot there. Shane went to the body smart, then he sneaks an overhead right right there. And it actually did hurt Ricky. Now here's what it looked like in slow motion. It was a good shot in slow motion. You know you can chop down a sequoia with a pen knife if you chop long enough. <laughs> Wright's trainer, Dan Birmingham, has just had a violently angry fit in the corner, dressing his fighter down for a full minute for that little show. Wright left the corner grinning. Power shots in round five by copy box count. Mosley threw 51, landed 18. Wright came back in the round, landed 14 power shots of his own. So probably Winky gave a round away there, or Shane won it, as Wright tried to make a point. Well, Hard right, right hand by Wright. There's that jab again. Oh. I would say that Winky's punches are stiff, but not really hard. No, the the heavy punches. And what that means is they got they feel like lead when they hit you. They don't shock you. They won't knock you out with one of them right away. But they're lead. They got that lead feel to them. He's heavy-handed in a sense. But it, as I was saying earlier to Roy off off camera. Winky's so confident of his ability to win rounds that he doesn't feel any urgency about knocking people out. No, he doesn't. He just feels like he's going to keep this pressure on like he's doing now and walk you down, make you tired, and outwork you. That's how he, his whole career has been based. He outworks the good fighters. He don't outbox them. He outwork them. Shane Mosley lands a long left hook. Right goes back to the right-left combinations that have served him so well. Oh, good 
left hand, all set up by that right jab. And Shane is waiting, and this is what you get when you wait on the southpaw. Quick little right hook caught Shane right on the chin. Right does it again. Right, stop, stop. Bring that, bring up. Huh. This is why they tell you not to win on the southpaw. Well, particularly a southpaw who's longer than you are. And strong. Bring up, bring up. Come on. Somehow or another, Mosley has to get inside of right. Another big left hand lands flush for right. Mosley, after, after throwing the combination of the body, backed off. Another quick right hook by right. Good jab to the body by Mosley. The right is very, very comfortable right here. This is where he wants to be. This is the fight he wants. He has Shane backing up. He does what he wants to when he gets ready. This is the fight Winky Wright wants against any fighter. He's got such a quick release on the right hook and the left when he gets inside. It's very tough to stop him. No problem. No problem. Keep short stepping him. That's all you gotta do, Wink. That's all you gotta do. Keep the feint working. Free. Relax. Relax. Get your win. Faint, keep the faint working. You got him really looking for it now. Faint and then open up. Faint and open up sometimes. He's not seeing the left hand. Yeah. Keep that left hand pumping. Keep that left hand pumping. Come on. Don't lay. Don't lay, Winky. Gotcha. You outclass this guy 100% when you don't lay. Gotcha. Three. The couple. The fun couple. Swallow. It's by going to that body. It's by not. If you touch him with a, if you touch him with a couple of short shots, I need some big shots. Out there. Well, here's the fun couple of the week, Larry. That's uh, Bernard Hopkins on the left and Oscar Deloy on the right. What's going on there, Larry? Well, they announced today that uh, Bernard Hopkins is going to fight for Delahoya's Golden Boy Promotions. Leaving Delahoya is leaving Bob Arum to fight under his own banner, and Hopkins is now a partner in that uh, in that company so they're working together uh, it'll be interesting to see whether uh, Wright will be able to make a fight with either of them and how that would play into the promotional angle assuming Wright wins tonight Harold how do you have it through six okay Jim four rounds to two 58 56 Ronald Winky Wright Jim, I thought Shane Mosley had a fairly decent run around four. Landed some nice shots. Round five, Wicky Wright just gave up by dropping his hands. Other than that, it's been all Ronald Wicky Wright. Effective aggressiveness, tremendous defense, that, that great right jab, and a heck of a right hook. Good jab by Mosley. Oh, uh, that told tweet to see Benoit and Oscar together, that, that just looks so ad ad adorable to me, you know. I just <laughs> Oscar getting into business with Bernard Hopkins. Yes. He is a brave man, oh, isn't he, Rose? Really? so adorable, you know. Care to make any categorical predictions as to what will come of all that? None. <laughs> Some people are laying odds of when the first lawsuit happens. <laughs> and the over-under is what? <laughs> Two months? Two weeks. <laughs> No, but I think it's a great move for them if it uh, continues after their careers. Yeah, that's a good combination by Ricky Wright right there. Followed by, or, uh, uh, concluded with the hard left hand over the head. Shane Mosley, two hard right hands to the head of right. Mosley at 135 was a devastatingly hard puncher. Wright insisted to us yesterday that he was a powder puncher in the first fight. That may be a little bit too scathing. But clearly, Shane Mosley at 154 is not the punching scourge that he was in lower weight class. No, and, and he doesn't have the late confidence that Winky has because Winky fights his late style of fight. Shane doesn't fight in a late style like this. Shane is an early car. He's a sprinter. He usually gets to the 50-yard line first, and then he got him hands on the rest of the night to win the fight. Yeah, but conversely, Wright fighting a smaller guy isn't showing any power either. Well, I mean, Wright never showed that one punch power. He's showing power, but not one punch power. He's never been a one punch guy. He's always been an accumulative guy. 
Mosley did mount a big comeback on the scorecards down the stretch last September against Oscar De La Hoya in the one big win he has had in recent years. I see either an abrasion or maybe a slight cut, more likely an abrasion on the side of uh, Winky's right eye. All right, all right, all right. Seven rounds out of 12 in the books, December 10. Tune in for Reverse of the Curse of the Bambino, an HBO Sports documentary chronicling the Red Sox and their stirring win this year. Updated from the earlier documentary, Curse of the Bambino, you'll follow the Sox from their alleged 1918 Babe Ruth curse all the way through to the breaking of that spell in this year's World Series. Shane, we're going to win this fight. It's the last thing we do tonight. We're going to win this fight. You hear me? Okay. It's all about a matter of who's got the who's got the wavels right now, okay? It's a matter of willpower. You understand me? You got the willpower for me tonight? Or are you going to... Hey, Shane, we got three months of training invested in this. Okay? Now, just pull it up. Take a deep breath. You got the heart for this? Hold Jump on. Jump on. When he goes straight to the back. Come on, people. All right, take it up. Dominate. Round eight. We don't know what's on the scorecards, of course, but the numbers suggest that Wright is even more firmly in control now than was the case eight months ago. Watch your feet. Say it can't keep waiting on, on uh, Rick Wright. I guess he's on the court with bigger shots. Here's a big Shane Mosley play. Yeah, but this is what Ricky wants. He wants him to put out so you get him tired. And watch what he does as soon as Shane stops. That's what he does. He's going to come right back to the fight and he's going to continue to work the head and he's going to try to work Shane down. This is how Ricky fights. Ricky loves this. What if he runs into a guy who doesn't stop? He's not going to run today. He'll stop himself. He's been around the block a long time. There ain't many guys that don't stop. That guy's almost unhuman. <laughs> they trade body shots at close range. That's smart by Shane to throw the body shots. But Shane's dead tired too. Shane crashing punches off of Winky's skull. Winky stays in that defensive shell. Now pops to the body again. Both guys trying to chop the opponent down with body shots. Whatever happens in this fight, Shane Mosey is making it more competitive, more interesting. Fighting with more spirit. He fighting like a guy who's out on his own, like I said at the top of our show. Absolutely. He's like a guy who's fighting a win or die battle here. And I love to see this in him. Huge right shot. hand by Mosley. Biggest punch of the fight for him. Oh, 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 oh. I, I thought it lifted the back foot of right off the canvas. That shows maturity in Shane at least. He just can't wear himself down. But this is right comes back fight. to the body and to the head. Well, I told you, Winky, this is Winky's oh, style of fight. Up, up. Come on, guys. This round will be decided in this last minute. Best punch of the round so far was Mosley's right hand. Both guys have had some solid connects. Mosley escapes from the corner. Good idea. Very good idea. Now he finds himself against the ropes again. Fights his way off. It looks like uh, Mosley is trying to stop his jab by holding, holding his uh, right with his own left. Yeah. That's a round that judges may have given to Shane Mosley, narrowing Winky Wright's margin on the scorecards. Turn it on him and listen to me. You have to listen now, to me. Chief. Remember I told you we were going to turn it on him in the second half of the fight? This is what you're doing now. This is what you're doing. You're killing him. Now, no matter no matter how many punches you're throwing, nothing stops us. Nothing stops us. Do you hear me? Nothing is going to stop us. And keep jump. staying inside with them. Get your hands back up, keep them short, and be explosive. Those right hands are killing. You can't take it much longer. Okay? Don't go overboard, but you have to be steady, just like you did when you worked in the gym, when you worked on the inside. 
He sees Shane throwing a one, two, one, two, one, two. And he's doing this to keep Winky from throwing that big jab. Keeps Winky's hands pinned to his face. As long as his hands are pinned to his face, he can't be offensive. Then later in the round, you saw him land that overhand right. Do one there. And he followed it with a second one that did get in. Right, that was a, probably the best punch of the fight so far tonight for Shane Mosley. Now you heard Joe Goosen trying very hard to boost Shane Mosley's confidence, telling him right can't take that right hand much longer. That may or may not be true, but certainly Shane responds to Goosen in such a way as to indicate he believes he's still in the fight. He doesn't like start out right away with that right hook with that right jab, doing a cost and get caught with a right hook just then. See how he's trying to spar that with his left hand to stop the right jab? He trying. <laughs> And so Wright uses feints to set it up. Good lands an lands an excellent left hook. Stepping in. There's that right hook again. So they trade hooks. Body shot by Wright. Mosley with the combination in return. Goosen makes a good point when he tells Shane to keep his hands busy to keep Wright's hands from working. Keep Wright's hands pinned to his head. The more busy as Shane's hands are, the more Winky's hands have to stay home. So I understand what Goosen is trying to get him to do. Does Winky ever throw any body shots? <laughs> Yes, it does. It doesn't make any difference if he doesn't. He throws and he throws very effective body shots. That was a jab to the body. Shane Mosley hired Joe Goosen partially because he's known him since he was 12 years old. He's fought against various of Goosen's fighters in the past and knew what style Joe trained in. And most particularly, Goosen has achieved a major resurrection in recent months with Diego Corrales. Goosen took over Corrales, improved his boxing style, and has trained him to stunning victories over Joel Casamayor and Asselino Freitas. Mosley's looking for the same kind of magic from Joe. Good right up cut by Shane Mosley right there. Oh, good left hand by Ricky White, though. Oh, and the right, right hand Rick. snaps Mosley's head back. Oh, straight left dude, actually. Right, right, right. So Winky Wright starting to target his left hand again. And Shane Mosley knows he has to go on the offensive. Try to keep Winky Wright in a defensive mode, as Joe Goosen has urged him to do. And when you wait on Winky like this, you let Winky do what he wants to do. And that's not good for Shane Mosley. Fighters play to the crowd. And we've got three rounds to go. That was a good round, just like that. Short stepping. Short stepping. Breathe. Breathe. I'm telling you. Good work. Good work. Just like that. Just like that. Keep turning them. Keep turning them. Breathe. Relax. Relax. Good. Come on, breathe. Yes. Breathe. He does not have to stay with you. He's going to try to fake you out like he's got it. He don't have what you have left. Do you understand? I know that is a fact. He doesn't have it. You know it, right? Yeah. Okay. Come on, Take a deep breath. He see Shane waiting on Wink again. Wink throws the jab and boom, catches him sitting still with the left hand. Every time he waits on Winky, Winky lands that big left hand. Wright's punch output is dropping as the fight goes on. And no doubt, Wright's punch output is dropping because Mosley has been far more offensive 
and effective in recent rounds than was the case in the first fight. Harold, how do you have it through now? Okay, Jim. 87, 84, six rounds to three. Ronald Winky Wright. Jim, I tell you something. One of the reasons why Winky Wright is always so effective is great ring generalship. He keeps the guy oh, on the on, end of on. the shots at a proper distance where he can pop him with a red chair and Moses can't get to him. Oh, in other oh, words, he gives the short amount of way at the, you know, at the right distance with the whack him with that right jab and then come up, of course, with the straight left. Ring generalship. Mosley cartwheeled over right all the way to the far side of the ring and Winky turned around and hit him with the left hand. And Scott hits him, him with two hand. more straight left hands. Clean left hand. On the button. Mosley lands the right through the guard there. First two were blocked. But see the harder Shane punches, the harder Winky tries to come. He wants to take the uh take the confidence away from Shane. Oh bro. Dan Birmingham continually asks Winky to short step Shane Mosley. What's that, Roy? He tells him to take short steps and walk him down. Keep taking short steps and walk him down. Don't step big. You got to take short oh, steps so that you can get right your on. feet down and react quick if you need to. See, those are big steps. Like you don't want to take those big steps like that. The shorter steps would mean shorter punches, more control punches. Bring on, bring on, bring on. Wright continues to seize the initiative with the jab. This has been a very good round for Winky Wright. I thought Mosley has looked a little tired in this round. Oh. Under the belt, Mosley lands a low blow. And Joe Cortez issues a warning to Shane. Well, both fighters have been warned once for low blows. There's a solid right hook by Wright. Another straight left hand. Mosley's getting tattooed by leather in this round. There's that jab again. Four punch combination. This is when we can start to feel good. He feels like he's in his territory now. Looks this as though Winky felt as though he needed a statement round yeah, here. This is the way he's most comfortable at. Shane Mosley seemed to have been generating some momentum in the fight. But Winky Wright has brought it momentarily to a halt for this performance in this round. And we'll go to the championship rounds with, once again, Wright seemingly on top on the scorecard. They are. They're trying to, they're trying to, trying to take it from you, man. Do you hear us? I breathe. Relax. We need two more rounds just like that. Six minutes just like that. Breathe more, breathe more. All right, man. Okay. Don't stand still. Don't stand All right? Still. Keep short stepping. Short stepping. Double up on the jet. Show them, busy, throw them doubles and triples in there like you did that all round. All the rounds, he, the great ones will right. find it, right. and you will find it, and you have to start punching short and stiff. You have got to give me three minutes this round of you dominating him, not the other way around, not even close. Okay, I need you to put it on him, I need you to back him up and show him who is in charge. It's so necessary. I'm telling you the honest to God's truth here. Do you believe me? By CompuBox numbers, the tenth was a wipeout round. Winky Wright, 30 out of 55, 16 to 28 power shots, 14 to 27 jabs. A brilliant round for Wright. Mosley landed nine punches. You and Harold Letterman's card is correct. Shane Mosley needs a knockout. You heard oh, Winky oh, Wright's oh, oh, trainer oh, say doubles and triples, meaning don't go for the big shots, oh, stay oh, under oh, control. Oh, I think that's a smart thing to say because Shane is a big puncher. Although he's at a higher weight class, he still is an explosive puncher. Not just over the course of his career, but from round to round during the fight, the consistency of Winky Wright is amazing. If you were to look at Wright's whole career from start to finish, you'd see 400 similar rounds. Yep, because he's a modern big Marvin Hagler. And that's what people, that's why I liked about him when I saw him, because oh, no, I knew he was right very there. consistent, on, and he guys. stays right with the target. People don't, people can't take that nowadays. Mosley's face is beginning to show the damage that Wright has applied. He's got scuff marks 
around both cheeks. Two fighters talking to each other in the ring. They've known each other a long time. Oh, bring out, bring out, bring out, bring out, bring out, bring out, bring Shane Mosley was one of the most decorated amateur fighters ever in America, fighting at 139 pounds. Then entered the pros and went down four pounds to 135. Oh, hold on, 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 let's go, let's go, you guys, give me three rounds, guys. Good shot. Oh, great, stop punching. Hard right uppercut by Mosley, his best punch in two rounds. Stop right there, stop right there, hold on, stop right there, let's go. Stop, stop, stop right there. Come on, guys, come on. Whenever Good Shane lands a combination, Winky comes back with straight left hand. Oh, Always okay. does. Oh, oh, oh. Always make sure he gets his punches back. Okay. One of the things trainers look for in a gym is my fighter competitive yeah, enough to want to make a statement every time he gets hurt. Oh, yeah, shot Winky right. Good with a straight hand. left hand right into the mouth of Shane Mosley. Good time to say at least on that's what's going to happen to him. Right, barging in the Mosley with the jab again. Yep. Pops him with the left hand. Backs him off with the body shot. The jab, this Hard body shot back. by Mosley. His best punch of the round. And right. Has a rare moment of walking away. This is it, baby. It's gonna come down to this round right here. About this round. Yeah, you got the ball. Got the control. That's it. Back to the neck. Back to the neck. Sit back, baby. Now look, Shane. That was good. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta try for that right hand over the top. Do you hear me? Take some deep breaths through your nose. I got it, Joe. Feel good? Okay. All right, here we go. Hey, Shane, last round. Okay, last round. Touch him up. All right, Shane. Keep that jab working. More left hands. He's real frustrated now. He's going for broke, Wink, I'm telling you. You get your lips up, you get your mouth free. Try to look like you're punching. The ref's going to stop him. I'm going to stay on the ref. But I'm going to tell you right now, you've got to back him up with a little head movement. Don't yeah. walk straight in. And I need, I need, I need, I need that right hand. Shane Mosey has put up a more spirited battle in this fight than in the original but right now it doesn't appear to be good enough no it doesn't in the last two rounds Shane Mosley slowed down a little bit averaging only 43 punches per round some of that was because Winky Wright stepped it up and oh, kept no, the right there, jab stop. and the left hand in his face Wright's corner warned him to look for Mosley to be trying for a knockout shot and Joe Goosen hinted as much when he said, you got to get in an overhand right. There it goes, Jeff again. Stop, 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 stop. Roy Jones, Shane Mosley was the greatest lightweight of this era. The greatest lightweight since Roberto Duran in the eyes of many, including Larry Merchant. He probably knew when he left the 135-pound division to move north for more money that he was leaving behind the neighborhood in which he fought best, right? Yes, he did know that. A lot of times we make sacrifices like that because we're in this sport to make money, also to be a professional. He already accomplished what he wanted to accomplish as a professional. He became a world champion. Then, at that point, it was time for him to go up and make money. He has to survive. He has family to feed. He has to survive and make money, too. So his money was to move up and take the big fights. That's why he's here right now. And, of course, he made the big splash by beating Oscar De La Hoya at 147 pounds the first time. Ultimately moved up to 154 and beat De La Hoya again. But other than that, it's been mostly rough sledding for Shane Mosley. But, you know, keep in mind that between Mosley and De La Hoya at 154, the only good fighter either of them beat, which is De La Hoya beating Vargas. Most fighters, even the best fighters, when they move up in weight, 
They're not as dominant as they were at the lower weights. And maybe that's just the story of this fight, as it was the first time. Winky Wright has been a 154-pound fighter his entire career. That, at the end of the day, was probably enough of an advantage to separate Winky Wright from Shane Mosley. Yeah, probably was. Oh, stop, stop! Stop right there! Two talented fighters, two careers now seemingly headed in opposite directions. We don't know when we'll see Shane Mosley at the elite level again. We wait to see what happens with Winky Wright. Good spirited, tough fight. Very good fight. Even though Wright appeared to have the best of it. Shane Mosley tried to hang in there until the miracle, but the miracle never happened. The miracle was that right jab for Winky Wright. Trust me. Two of the classiest people in the sport with a spirited and fun performance. Harold Letterman had you scored. Okay, Jim. 117, 111, nine rounds to three. Ronald Winky Wright. Certainly Shane Mosley won that eighth round. He also won rounds four and five. Round five, Winky Wright just gave away. Other than that, I thought it was all Winky Wright. Clean punching, like Roy said, with the right jab, the right hook, the straight left. Effective aggressiveness. He backed him up the whole fight. Tremendous defense. Catches everything on the, on the uh, forearms and the elbows. I thought it was a little bit closer than that. We'll have to wait to see what uh, Las Vegas' finest judges believe. Well, only one of them is from Las Vegas. Uh, as we take a look at the three judges for the fight, Hubert Earl is from Nova Scotia, Canada. And uh, scoring Delaware against Campus is not exactly scoring at the upper level of the sport. <laughs> Dwayne Ford, of course, is a decorated veteran from here in Vegas, one of the best-known judges in the entire world, scored the second mosley Delaware fight for Mosley by the margin of 116 to 112. And Tommy Kasbarek is from New Jersey, although, of course, you've seen him at the upper level many times, scored Forrest's first win over Mosley, 115-110 for Forrest. Now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer, who has the results. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Mandalay Bay, we go to the scorecards. Hubert Earl scores the contest 114 to 114. He has it even. Tommy Kazmarek and Dwayne Ford both have it 115 to 113 to the winner by majority decision. And still recognized as the undisputed Super Waterweight Champion of the World, Winky Ryan! Well, the scores were far closer all the way around. Canadian judge scores at an even fight, 114-114. And uh, Tommy Kasmarek and Dwayne Ford, both veterans, have right the winner, but by the relatively narrow margin of 115 to 113. So their view of the fight varies slightly from ours in terms of the competition. But nevertheless, the winner is as expected. The favorite, the guy who won the first time around, Winky Wright. And here's uh, a look at final CompuBox numbers that show that Wright landed, according to CompuBox, 119 more punches, threw 20 more, landed at a significantly higher connect percentage. These are not the numbers from a two-point fight, by and large, but at the end of the day, all's well that ends well. Wright uh, landing 92 more jabs, throwing 108 more, and uh, at 35%, with the longer jab, you are going to keep your opponent on the defensive most of the night, and that's what he did. Larry Merchant stands by with the winner, Winky Wright. Thank you very much, Jim. Jimmy, Beautiful job. Congratulations, Winky. Why was this 
more spirited and even tougher fight than the first one. Well, he went home and he uh, worked on what he did on the first time. I give it to him. He gave a great fight this time. I still thought I caught him more, but he was he was standing up. He was a great fight. I, like I said, I, I, I'm glad to be fighting Shane Mosley. He's a great fighter. He deserved the rematch, and I gave it to him. Have you had a tougher fight than this? Uh, I don't really know. That was a very good fight. Shane came to fight. He did a lot. You know, he he had better defense this time. I take my hat off to him. He's a great fight. I love him. I'm, I'm glad to give him my opportunity. I give it back to him. I, I do Bernard and Delahoya. Me and Shane need to do it again. What happened early in the fight when you got nailed and you decided to show him that you could take his punch and drop your hands? What was the point? Now, it was just, I, I, I wanted to let him know he couldn't hurt me, but he got a good punch, but, you know, I just feel that I've been hit with bigger punches, but he's a great fighter. He got all the heart in the world. I take my hat off to him, and I just wanted to show I could take a punch. Where do you think you're going to go from now? My understanding is you believe you don't have a manager now, you don't have a promoter now, you're free to go anywhere. What's your choice? Oh, I want I want Tito Trinidad. Uh, he looked the best out of everybody to me. You know, uh, I I just think me and Felix would be a very great fight. And then me and uh, Bernardo De La Hoya, You know, whoever want to fight me, I want them three. And then, like I said, I love to get Shane another shot because I think this was a great fight. I think the fans loved it, and I want to get the fans what they want to see. Thank you very much again. Congratulations. Thank you. Hold on. I want to say what's up, St. Pete. Everybody home in Tampa. We did it, baby. DC, Harlem. All right. Okay. Shane, you came with a little bit more tonight. What was the difference for you between the first fight and this one? Well, the first fight, you know, uh, I didn't have as much energy. This time I had more energy. As you can see, you know, they coming come to the last tour, towards the last part of the round. I had them on the toes, moving around, getting away from me because I was hurting them with shots, body shots. And, I, and at the end of the fight, at the end of the fight, I was stronger than he was. Uh, but you know, you know, things happen. I mean, the referee, the, the judges gave it to the champ. Uh, I don't know. I mean, in the last round is what he's trying to say. Yeah, we, we thought he definitely won the yeah, last Yeah, you know, I was on the attack. You know, I had him clinching and holding and, and running for dear life. And, uh, you know, I mean, those things happen. What makes him so tough for you? Well, I mean, he's pretty tough because he has uh, that uh, great right jab, the southpaw jab, and the southpaw stance. And it makes it a little tough to, to, uh, to get inside and pick him with the different shots and stuff. But, you know, he, he's a hell of a, a southpaw, a hell of a fighter. And, you know, he gave it all his hard stuff. But, you know, I still, you know, thought I won the fight. But, you know, those things happen, so we move on. All right, Shane. Uh, based on this fight, even though you've been losing more fights lately than winning, uh, do you feel boosted in some way that people are not going to say it's all over for Shane? What do you think of where your career could be right now? Uh, well, you know, that, like I said, that fight, you know, I thought, really thought I won the fight. And people understand and know that, you know, I, I was in there giving them my all. And that's what I come to do. You know, when, when they see me fight, I, I fight, give my 100% all, and then you're going to get a good fight. All right. I saw Oscar De La Hoya the other night. Yeah. He said that he weighed about 150. He thought he might go down, back down to welterweight if some opportunity that he liked came up there. Any thought on your part of moving back down where you were more effective? I don't think so. I think that my, my weight is at 154, but uh, you know, you, you never know. I mean, I got to get in the gym and work out and see how I can do things. But I, I think that 54 is my weight, though. So does this fight and the result encourage you to go on or discourage you because you lost again? Well, it encouraged me because I felt that I won, and it encouraged me because I did a great job. I uh, went out there, and I banged with the banger, and I boxed with him, and uh, you know, I got a lot. I think I got a lot more solid shots in than he did. You know, he got he got a lot of straight shots in too. But my my punches were were solid and they were straight. I got a lot more punches in, and a lot more cleaner shots, harder shots than he did. He just basically boxed. 